So cross-cultural marriages are quite challenging because there are some big differences in the cultures between, well, getting married in China and of course getting married in the West. Welcome, Welcome to, to another, another video. video. So why have I just put myself through this hell? Let me set the scene. I'm here in a back alley in Canton, otherwise known as Guangzhou, and I'm going to go to a wedding. But it's not an ordinary wedding, you know, I've been to plenty of Chinese weddings. This is a foreigner marrying a Chinese uh, woman, so a foreign man marrying a Chinese woman. I'm going to talk about these sort of uh, cross-cultural marriages in this episode. I've been to plenty, I've got some footage from uh, one of my black friends getting married here as well. So stick around, we're going to talk about what these marriages and these weddings are all about. Now the most unfortunate thing about being invited to a wedding in China is that you have to pay. So you have to prepare what's called a hongbao, like this. The going rate down here in Guangdong is 500 RMB if they're your friend. You can go as little as 300 but that's in pretty poor taste. So it's expensive. This of course doesn't really matter all that much because it's a bit more of an investment than anything else. For instance, the wedding that I attended here was a good friend of mine and he actually had attended my wedding a few years ago and he'd given me a red packet so it evens out. And this is something a lot of people kind of count on, you know, when they go uh, to friends' weddings they'll always be very generous but then when it's their turn to get married they're going to invite all the people, you know, um, that they've been to the, their weddings and uh, expect sort of a sort of a fat pay paycheck or windfall at the end of it. So it's kind of cool and it certainly does help pay for the wedding. So let's have a serious talk here. There are a couple of myths I have to get out of the way. I have to dispel them. Number one, I do get asked this a lot. People that are planning to live in China or maybe they're dating a Chinese girl online and they have ideas of coming here and retiring here or coming here to get married and then settling down or perhaps coming here getting married, finding a job, you know, and living with their, their new wife. Forget about it. <laughs> China does, does, just does not work like the rest of the world. You cannot become a citizen. There's no naturalization process. I know for a fact that if you go to the UK, for instance, or America, if you get married to a local there, there's a process that you can go through in order to eventually become a citizen of that country. And of course, because you're married to a local person, you're immediately given certain rights and, you know, you can apply to work and all that kind of thing. And you can do it if your husband or wife is, say, British or American. However, here in China, they're still very backwards when it comes to that kind of thing because China is a very homogenous sort of society. So if you get married to, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, husband or wife, you are only going to be given what's called a family reunion visa or family visitors visa which basically means you're allowed to come and visit your wife or visit your husband but you're not allowed to work on that visa you're not allowed to you know do anything that a normal citizen would be able to do you're basically allowed to come here on an extended holiday to see your husband or wife now the length of this visa depends uh, it starts as low as six months. It all depends on the nationality that you are and, of course, your circumstances. Whether, you, whether or, not, or not you've lived in China before, there's all sorts of things they take into account. And then they give you, say, six months, maybe a year. I got a two-year visa. And that's, well, I should say residence permit. I got a two-year family reunion residence permit because I've been in China for so long and they could see I had years and years of work permits and things like that so they were like uh, he's not really a risk so I got two years I don't know if it goes any higher than two years but I'm pretty sure that's kind of the max anyway so at the end of those two years I have to go and renew once again and uh, you know I had to go in for an interview with my wife when I got this um, this family reunion thing and asked a bunch of questions and I needed to provide a lot of paperwork and my wife had to provide a lot of paperwork and it wasn't a simple thing to do but it was definitely a lot easier than uh, getting a work permit I'll tell you that much thing is like I said I'm not allowed to work in China I'm not allowed to do anything other than just sit around and visit my wife so that's why all my work is now on YouTube because I'm not technically uh, working for a Chinese company I'm not actually working in China I'm not taking a job away from anyone in China so there we go 
So I just wanted to dispel that myth. You can't naturalize and become a Chinese citizen and get a Chinese passport. You can't work here. However, Taiwan and Hong Kong are different. Now, <clears throat> I know China will say that Hong Kong and Taiwan are a part of China, and I'm not here to argue politics. But what I will tell you is that both Taiwan and Hong Kong have different government systems. And so I have a friend who got married in Hong Kong and immediately he was allowed to start working there. You know, it's going through the naturalization process which takes about seven years before he can get his own Hong Kong ID and passport and stuff. And the same goes for my friend in Taiwan who got married to someone in Taiwan and immediately was allowed to start working and, you know, settle down and all that kind of thing. So, I just wanted you all to know that uh, if you're planning on getting married in the mainland to a mainlander, doesn't matter man or woman, you will not actually have any rights. You will not be able to do anything here in China, which is incredibly frustrating, you know, other than visit your spouse. Are you going to be accepted by your Chinese fiance's family? Well, it really all comes down to money, unfortunately. And that's because in China, money is God. I'm going to give you a very good example of this. I have an African friend named Elvis, and he's a fantastic guy. And uh, his Chinese fiance, stunning, stunning girl, her family would not accept him because he was black. And, you know, this is something that has to be addressed. And that is that Chinese people are incredibly racist and discriminatory when it comes to anyone who's not Chinese. I mean, they're probably one of the most homogenous nations in the world and they're incredibly, they're just very racist and that's because they have for so long not been exposed to the rest of the world. So if you're anything other than Chinese, and I mean it doesn't even matter if you're Korean or Japanese or anything like that, you're going to face a lot of barriers, there are going to be a lot of things put in your way. Um, but let me just tell you his story, so basically the family took a lot of convincing but after he proved that he had enough money after he bought them a car and bought a house because that's kind of part of the whole traditional family thing here is to to make sure you have a house and a car for your bride to be and also the family because they plan to move in with you later um, but once he'd done all of that and proved that he had the income and that he was a decent straightforward guy they eventually accepted him and they got married and they're, they've been happily married for a number of years now and in fact, I think she's in Africa with him at the moment. So, you know, that's just an example of how money is probably the most important thing when it comes to being accepted. Because if the family could overlook their sort of uh, racist nonsense and, uh, you know, eventually allow him to go ahead and get married to her, it just shows you that's what China is all about. It's all about the money. So if you're a woman, you really don't need to worry too much because in Chinese society, it's all about the man and the man's family, they're the one who has to provide. So as a woman marrying a Chinese husband, he is expected to provide a house for you, a stable situation, in other words, he has to have a good job, and uh, preferably a car as well. But the thing is, as a man marrying into a Chinese family, you're expected to actually pay a dowry in a lot of cases. Now, of course, China is getting more and more modern and if you meet a very modern girl and uh, you know she may be very outspoken and very wise in the ways of the world you know you probably don't have to worry about a dowry but if you're marrying somebody from a traditional family especially if they're from a rural family you will be expected to pay a dowry and it really depends on the family you know they, if they're of a low status you pay less if they're of a higher status you pay more I have a friend who paid 10,000 RMB to get married to his lovely wife and that was an absolute steal and then again I have another friend who had to pay 250,000 RMB to his fiance's family so you know it really depends uh, <clears throat> I personally did not have to pay any sort of dowry to marry my wife but our circumstances are a little different um, you know basically what I'm trying to say here is you may be stuck paying a dowry Anyway, let's uh, brush the whole money thing aside for a while and let's actually talk about some of the big cultural differences. First thing I'll do is, if you're a woman marrying a Chinese man, be, be prepared for your mother-in-law to pester you non-stop to have a child. 
I mean, literally the day after you're married, you can expect her to be giving you self-help books on how to conceive and uh, pestering you about having a child. And every single time you meet with your family, your Chinese family, expect that whole like, when are you going to have a child question to pop up? It's incredibly annoying and it's, <laughs> it's probably, probably one of the biggest bugbears of any relationship here is that the traditional Chinese family will almost want to force you to have children the minute you're married. From a, a man's perspective, it's also very annoying as well because they will, every time you meet them, be asking about when you're going to have a child. But of course, it's, uh, it's less pressure on, on the man and more pressure on the woman because if you don't have a child, they think something's wrong. And it's usually, you know, you might not want to have a child, but they'll think, oh, they don't have a child because they can't. There must be something wrong with the, with the bride. It's, uh, it's silly. Remember that China is a, still a very traditional sort of a country. And although it cannot be said for everybody because the younger generation are sort of changing, but you know, still as it is, people my age and, and even younger still have to deal with all this traditional nonsense. Um, be prepared as the man to pay for everything. The responsibility is all on you for everything. Now, of course, cultural differences are so varied and we're running out of time in this video, but it's not a big deal because if you look through my channel, I've done so many videos with my wife. It'll make you understand the differences between the two cultures. But not only that, on the ADV China channel, we've done videos about getting married, had some pretty in-depth conversations. And of course, don't forget my friend Seamilk is also married to a Chinese local and his channel's got tons of videos with his wife as well. And although she did study overseas, so she has a very sort of Western mindset, they still have to deal with the family, traditional stuff and all that kind of nonsense too. So I absolutely suggest you go check it all out. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I really hope you enjoyed this or found it useful. I know it's a bit of a, a boring topic for those of you who are not actually in any kind of relationship with a Chinese person, but uh, thanks for sticking around. And until next time, you know the drill. Stay awesome.